The meaning of algebra. Algebra is a branch of mathematics that uses the basic processes of arithmetic such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. However, algebra uses letters such as A, B, C, or X, Y, Z as symbols to represent numbers. The first example that we have, we know that 5 plus some number is equal to 8. And using the same community property, we can say some number plus 5 is equal to 8. Well, we know that this number must be equal to 3, our question mark. 3 plus 5 is equal to 8. 5 plus 3 is equal to 8. The sentence is true. In algebra, we're doing the same thing. We know that 5 plus some unknown, represented by this variable, the letter x, is equal to 8. Conversely, we also know that that same variable, x plus 5, is equal to 8. Well, we know that x must equal 3, to 3. We can substitute that. 3 plus 5 is equal to 8. It makes it a true statement. The idea to convey here is that you've been doing this type of work since you were in third grade, so you've been doing algebra since you're in third grade. The only difference is instead of using a question mark, we're using letters. That's the meaning of algebra. Okay. These are commonly used formulas to find the area of various geometric shapes. And we can see the rectangle is equal to letter A is equal to L times W, the algebra. L standing for length, W standing for width. The area of a square is equal to A equal to S squared. S equal to side, side to the second power. The area of a triangle is equal to one-half B, H. B equal base, H for height. The area of a circle is equal to pi radius squared. Pi approximately 3.14, or we can also represent that as 22 over 7. And we know that R is equivalent to the radius. So again, using the algebraic method or formulas, we know what the letters stand for, and that's the whole idea behind the algebra. These formulas represent algebraic equations, formulas that we've been using uh, since the beginning of the math series. And one thing to keep in mind is that even though we're finding the area of a, of a rectangle, area is equal to length times the width, it's algebraic. And that's what we've been doing all along. So uh, this is nothing new that we're introducing to you other than the idea that we're using variables, the letters x, y, z, in place of numbers. So let's look at our next example and see which formula we would need to solve this appropriately. We have a rectangle. We're saying the length of our rectangle is 10 feet and the width is 5 feet. So we want to find the area of this rectangle. Well, using our algebraic formulas that we know, area of a rectangle, let's write it down. Area is equal to length times width. Okay? So let's just plug in what we know. The area is equal to length is 10 feet times our width is 5 feet, and let us now just solve. Area is equal to 10 times 5 would be 50 square feet. So this represents the area of this representation of this rectangle. In algebra, many problems are presented as equations. An equation is a mathematical expression indicating that both sides of the equal sign are equal. So the example that we have here we have 7 plus x is equal to 15. We can also state that as 7 plus an unknown is equal to 15. Well, we can substitute a variety of numbers for x, but we know that there is only one correct solution. So let's ask ourselves, 7 plus what number is equal to 15? Well, we know that that number must be 8. So x is equal to 8. That would be the correct solution to this equation. What we are trying to do in this opening lesson is to stress that algebra is not difficult. Algebra is logical. You need to use logic and common sense. Along with the workbooks and the award-winning teachers, you will discover that you don't need to fear the subject of algebra. But remember, don't skip the lessons. Don't let yourself fall behind by not fully understanding the lessons that these teachers will be teaching you. If you do, then algebra will become difficult. 
We have a simple problem here. Four boxes of CDs, and these are the four boxes of CDs, and they equal 120. Now, you could do this in your head. I know that. But this is really algebra. We're going to make an algebra problem out of this. Four boxes of CDs, and we're going to make these four boxes of CDs, we'll call that X. So instead of using this long term, algebra simplifies it, and we'll call it X. We can call it Y, Z, or B, but we use X. So 4X equals 120. Now remember, it's an equation, so whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other side. And so if this is 4X, all we have to do then is remember we just have to divide 4 into 120. And that will give us what the X will be. So 120 divided by 4 equals 30. So X equals 30. Now you do that in your head. You don't have to have algebra. But later on we're going to have a lot longer problems. There's a lot more things to algebra. But I want to stress in this lesson, right in the beginning, Algebra is not difficult if you follow along with your teachers, do the workbook questions, and do them carefully, and don't let yourself fall behind, because if you do, then you get lost, and then you'll be struggling all the way through algebra. I want to show you various scenes from my space program. As you look at these scenes, think of all the math and science used to build this equipment and the computers to operate these devices. As you look at these scenes, think of all the math, including algebra, that was needed to design and build this complicated equipment and place them in orbit. Remember, the men and women designing and building this equipment were once just like you learning basic algebra one. Enjoy these scenes and marvel at the technology. We have just looked at the amazing accomplishments that are done in space. Now I'd like you to look at scenes from around the world and think of the importance of knowing algebra in order to design and construct these buildings so they are strong and safe. Remember, these buildings must survive hurricane winds and even tornadoes 
and in some cities, earthquakes. Look at all these buildings and think of the designing that takes place for the electrical, plumbing, air conditioning and heat for each individual building. First, the solid foundation must be designed and then constructed before a building is erected. Think of the city planning for laying down underground pipes for water, sewer, and underground wiring for electricity and phones. Then every building must have construction plans. Think of the building plan so water never enters these buildings along the waterfront. As you can well imagine, one needs no algebra to construct these buildings. Please pause the video now and complete the problems in your workbook. When finished, press play and we'll continue with the next lesson.